Tim was right about this place. Anyone? Okay, keep it together. Get a grip. Hello Thur. Welcome to Darnell Glover Words of Wisdom, it was Chicago's own Flares, a vocal group out of one Chicago City's housing project singing one of Kenny Jones, as well as the lead singer is Mr. Jones, who at one time was one Smokey Robinson songwriters. The executive producer of this great song from the 60s is Darnell Glover of Darnell Glover Media Communications. Yes my love, I want you, I need you, like a goddess you came from nowhere. Boy, 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 would I like to go there, in this place we can never go wrong, we got a love, that is ever so strong. I want you, we can make it, I know we can, just take my hand to my lover's world, during these times many of the songs were songs of love. As our music of today has a powerful taking of our minds, that put many of us in a mindset of not thinking for ourselves but that of the songwriter. My question to you is, why would anyone would want to go to an lady or goddess that came from nowhere, and why would anyone would like to go there? And at the ending of the song he states we can make it, I know we can, just take my hand to my lover's world, why not to take the goddess to the world of nowhere, why is he talking about in a third party? I never any pain like being hurt by someone that I have loved. Some of the population would take them out of action for weeks, not knowing what to do or say. The word I love you in this time is being used to loosely and without true meaning of the word. What most do not understand is that one must love themselves deeply before they love another. Life is a gift that is given to each of us for enjoyment. It really saddened me when I come upon someone that has just had been played by some else who hurt others just for the fun of it. Why do this? What enjoyment do they get seeing someone's heart torn it apart? Now that go to the other music production by Darnell Glover with the artist being the Flares from Chicago. The upcoming song is entitled All I Need Plus, I am not saying that when they would state that you are all they need is a lie, but in this world and life we have to depend on many others in one fashion or another. Let's take listen to the Flares of Southside Chicago.
here we go again, you, are, all, I, need. What are we talking about here, we as a human being has many needs, that we rally cannot do without. Housing, employment, friends, family, transportation, money, and so on. Why would anyone believe someone telling them that they are all in need? I know it's just a sound produced by Darnell Glover with the Chicago Flyers vocal group, but still why would anyone believe anyone telling them this lie? So many times those who always talk about God etc. are those who are not helping the poor or those in need, they are the first to make judgment on others as well as call others out of their names. We have to stop hurting and giving pain to others, what will we gain by doing this? Nothing, a girl or boy do not just grow into woman or manhood just because they are male or female, it is a daily decision that is made daily by the person. A true man or woman do not feel that they have to lie about anything, for when they talk the truth flows out no matter what, we as a people have to wake up to the daylight and come out of the darkness of the night. Many have brothers, sisters, mothers and fathers but do not belong to a family. They stop eating and communicating together. Many do not have each other backs anymore. This is really sad isn't it? We do not take time out to spend with the kids any longer for we do not have time, or do not take the time to follow their mother, father or older brother or sister roles. Many times there miss a fear that one may not find someone to show the love they are seeking. There is fear that someone will come into one's life and break your heart. Let's talk about fear and reason. In civilized life it has at last become possible for large numbers of people to pass from the cradle to the grave without ever having had a pang of genuine fear. Many of us need an attack of mental disease to teach us the meaning of the word. William James we have all heard the seemingly discriminating remarks that fear is normal and abnormal, and that normal fear is to be regarded as a friend, while abnormal fear should be destroyed as an enemy. The fact is that no so-called normal fear can be named, which has not been clearly absent in some people, who have had every cause therefore. If you will run over human history in your mind, or look about yea in the present life, you will find here and there persons who in situations or before objects which ought, as any fearful soul will insist, to inspire the feeling of at least normal self-protecting fear, are nevertheless wholly without the feeling. 
they possess every feeling and thought demanded except fear. The idea of self-preservation is as strongly present, as with the most abjectly timid or terrified, but fear they do not know. This fearless awareness of fear suggesting conditions may be due to several causes. It may result from constitutional makeup, or from long-continued training or habituation, or from religious ecstasy, or from a perfectly calm sense of spiritual selfhood which is unhurtable, or from the action of very exalted reason. Whatever the explanation, the fact remains, the very causes which excite fear in most of us, merely appeal, with such people, if at all. To the instinct of self-preservation and to reason, the thought element of the soul, which makes for personal peace and wholeness. Banish all fear. It is on such considerations, that I have come to hold that all real fear feeling should, and may be banished from our life, and that what we call normal fear should be substituted in our language by instinct or by reason, the element of fear being dropped altogether. Everyone can testify that the psychical state called fear consists of mental representations of certain painful results James. The mental representations may be very faint as such, but the idea of hurt to self is surely present. If, then, it can be profoundly believed that the real self cannot be hurt, if the reason can be brought to consider vividly and believingly all quieting considerations, if the self can be held consciously in the assurance, that the white life surrounds the true self, and is surely within that self, and will suffer no evil to come nigh, while all the instincts of self-preservation may be perfectly active, fear itself must be removed as far as the east is from the west. These are the ways, then, in which any occasion for fear may be divided, as a warning and as a maker of panic. But let us say that the warning should be understood as given to reason, that fear need not appear at all and that the panic is perfectly useless pain. With these discriminations in mind, we may now go on to a preliminary study of fear. Preliminary study of fear. Fear is a an impulse, be a habit, see a disease. Fear, as it exists in man, is a make-believe of sanity, a creature of the imagination, a state of insanity. Furthermore, fear is, now of the nerves, now of the mind, now of the moral consciousness. The division depends upon the point of view. What is commonly called normal fear should give place to reason, using the word to cover instinct as well as thought. From the correct point of view all fear is an evil so long as entertained. Whatever its manifestations, wherever its apparent location, fear is a psychic state, of course, reacting upon the individual in several ways, as, in the nerves, in mental moods, in a single impulse, in a chronic habit, in a totally unbalanced condition. The reaction has always a good intention, meaning, in each case, take care. Danger. You will see that this is so, if you will look for a moment at three comprehensive kinds of fear. Fear of self, fear for self, fear for others. Fear of self is indirectly fear for self danger. Fear for others signifies forzenst or for repetitive distress to self, because of anticipated misfortune to others. I often wonder whether, when we fear for others, it is distress to self, or hurt to them that is most emphatically in our thought. Fear, then, is usually regarded as the soul's danger signal. But the true signal is instinctive and thoughtful reason. Even instinct and reason, acting as warning, may perform their duty abnormally, or assume abnormal proportions. And then we have the feeling of fear. The normal warning is induced by actual danger apprehended by mind in a state of balance and self-control. Normal mind is always capable of such warning. There are but two ways in which so-called normal fear, acting in the guise of reason, may be annihilated, by the substitution of reason for fear, and by the assurance of the white life. Let it be understood, now, that by normal fear is here meant normal reason real fear being denied place and function altogether. Then we may say that such action of reason is a benefactor to men. It is, with pain and weariness, the philanthropy of the nature of things within us. One person said, Tired? No such word in my house. Now this cannot be a sound and healthy attitude. Weariness, at a certain stage of effort, is a signal to stop work. When one becomes so absorbed in labor, as to lose consciousness of the feeling of weariness, he has issued a hurry call on death. 
I do not deny that the soul may cultivate a sublime sense of buoyancy and power, rather do I urge you to seek that beautiful condition, but I hold that when a belief or a hallucination refuses to permit you, to hear the warning of nerves and muscles, nature will work disaster inevitably. Let us stand for the larger liberty, which is joyously free to take advantage of everything nature may offer for true well-being. There is a partial liberty, which tries to realize itself by denying various realities as real, there is a higher liberty, which really realizes itself by conceding such realities, as real and by using or disusing them, as occasion may require in the interest of the self at its best. I hold this to be true wisdom, to take advantage of everything, which evidently promises good to the self, without regard to this or that theory, and freely to use all things material or immaterial, reasonable or spiritual. I embrace your science or your method, but I beg to ignore your bondage to philosophy or to consistency. So I say that to normal health the weary sense is a rational command, to replenish exhausted nerves and muscles. It is not liberty, it is not healthful, to declare, there is no pain. Pain does exist, whatever you affirm, and your affirmation that it does not is proof that it does exist. For why and how declare the non-existence, of that which actually is non-existent? But if you say, as a mat, life is about choices and the decisions we make. One has to think things through before making any decision, create plans and set goals in order to be successful in relationships, employment, family matters or anything else in life. Life is like a road. There are long and short roads, smooth and rocky roads, crooked and stray paths. In our life many roads would come our way, as we journey through life. There are roads that lead to a life of single blessedness, marriage, and religious vocation. There are also roads that lead to fame and fortune on one hand, or isolation and poverty on the other. There are roads to happiness as there are roads to sadness, roads towards victory and jubilation, and roads leading to defeat and disappointment. Just like any road, there are corners, detours, and crossroads in life. Perhaps the most perplexing road that you would encounter is a crossroad. With four roads to choose from and with limited knowledge on where they would go, which road will you take? What is the guarantee that we would choose the right one along the way? Would you take any road or just stay where you are in front of a crossroad? There are no guarantees. You do not really know where a road will lead you until you take it. There are no guarantees. This is one of the most important things you need to realize about life. Nobody said that choosing to do the right thing all the time would always lead you to happiness. Loving someone with all your heart does not guarantee that it would be returned. Gaining fame and fortune does not guarantee happiness. Accepting a good word from an influential superior to cut your trip short up the career ladder is not always bad, especially if you are highly qualified and competent. There are too many possible outcomes, which you really cannot control. The only thing you have power over is the decisions that you will make, and how you would act and react to different situations. Wrong decisions are always at hindsight. Had you known that you were making a wrong decision, would you have gone along with it? Perhaps not, why would you choose a certain path, when you know it would get you lost? Why make a certain decision, if you knew from the very beginning? that it is not the right one. It is only after you have made a decision, and reflected on it that you realize its soundness. If the consequences or outcomes are good for you, then you have decided correctly. Otherwise, your decision was wrong. Take the risk, decide. Since life offers no guarantee and you would never know that your decision would be wrong until you have made it, then you might as well take the risk and decide. It is definitely better than keeping yourself in limbo. Although it is true that one wrong turn could get you lost, it could also be that such a turn could be an opportunity for an adventure, moreover open more roads. It is all a matter of perspective. You have the choice between being a lost traveler or an accidental tourist of life. But take caution that you do not make decisions half wizardly. Taking risks is not about being careless and stupid. Here are some pointers that could help you choose the best option in the face of life's crossroads. Get as many information as you can about your situation. You cannot find the confidence to decide 
when you know so little about what you are faced with. Just like any news reporter, ask the five W's, what, who, when, where, and why. What is the situation? Who are the people involved? When did this happen? Where is this leading? Why are you in this situation? These are just some of the possible questions to ask to know more about your situation. This is important. Oftentimes, the reason for indecision is the lack of information about a situation. Identify and create options. What options do the situation give you? Sometimes the options are few, but sometimes they are numerous. But what do you do when you think that the situation offers no options? This is the time that you create your own. Make your creative mind work. From the most simplistic to the most complicated, entertain all ideas. Do not shoot anything down when an idea comes to your head. Sometimes the most outrageous idea could prove to be the right one in the end. You can ask a friend to help you identify options and even make more options if you encounter some difficulty, but make sure that you make the decision yourself in the end. Weigh the pros and cons of every option. Assess each option by looking at the advantages and disadvantages it offers you. In this way, you get more insights about the consequences of such an option. Trust yourself and make that decision. Now that you have assessed your options, it is now time to trust yourself. Remember that there are no guarantees and wrong decisions are always at hindsight. So choose decide believe that you are choosing the best option at this point in time. Now that you have made a decision, be ready to face its consequences, good and bad. It may take you to a place of promise or to a land of problems. But the important thing is that you have chosen to live your life instead of remaining a bystander or a passive audience to your own life. Whether it is the right decision or not, only time can tell. But do not regret it whatever the outcome. Instead, learn from it and remember that you always have the chance to make better decisions in the future. Well my friends, we are getting close to that time. Thank you for taking the time in viewing Darnell Glover words of wisdom. I want you to remember that impossible is just a word everyone, at some point of his or her life, has dreamed of being somebody special, somebody big. Who hasn't fantasized about being the one who hits their game-winning homer? Who hasn't dreamed of being the homecoming queen? And how many times have we dreamed of being rich, or successful, or happy with our relationships? Often, we dream big dreams and have great aspirations. Unfortunately, our dreams remain just that dreams. And our aspirations easily collect dust in our attic. This is a sad turn of events in our life. Instead of experiencing exciting adventures and self-actualization, we get caught up in the humdrum of living from day to day just barely existing. But you know what? Life could be so much better, if only we learn to aim higher. The most common problem to setting goals is the word impossible. Most people get hung up thinking I can't do this. It's too hard. It's too impossible. No one can do this. However, if everyone thought that, there would be no inventions, no innovations, and no breakthroughs in human accomplishment. Remember that scientists were baffled when they took a look at the humble bumblebee. Theoretically, they said, it was impossible for the bumblebee to fly. Unfortunately for the bumblebee no one has told it so. So fly it does. On the other hand, some people suffered from dreaming totally outrageous dreams and not acting on them. The result? Broken dreams and tattered aspirations. If you limit yourself with self-doubt and self-limiting assumptions, you will never be able to break past what you deem impossible. If you reach too far out into the sky without working towards your goal, you will find yourself clinging onto the impossible dream. Try this exercise. Take a piece of paper and write down some goals in your life. Under one header, list down things you know you can do. Under another header, write the things you might be able to do and under one more, list the things that, that are impossible for you to do now look at all the headers strive every day to accomplish the goals that are under things you know you can do. Check them when you are able to accomplish them. As you slowly are able to check all of your goals under that heading, 
try accomplishing the goals under the other header the one that reads you might be able to do as of the items you wrote under things I could do are accomplished you can move the goals that are under things that are impossible for you to do to the list of things you might be able to do as you iterate through this process you will find out that the goals you thought were impossible become easier to accomplish and the impossible begin to seem possible after all you see the technique here is not to limit your imagination it is to aim high and start working towards that goal little by little however it also is unwise to set a goal that is truly unrealistic those who just dream towards a goal without working hard end up disappointed and disillusioned on the other hand if you told someone a hundred years ago that it was possible for man to be on the moon they would laugh at you if you had told them that you could send mail from here to the other side of the world in a few seconds they would say you were out of your mind but through sheer desire and perseverance these impossible dreams are now realities Thomas Edison once said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Nothing could be truer. For one to accomplish his or her dreams, there has to be head work and discipline. But take note, that that 1% has to be a think big dream, and not some easily accomplished one. Ask any gym rat and he or she will tell you that there can be no gains, unless you are put out of your comfort zone. Remember the saying, no pain, no gain? that is as true as it can be. So dream on, friend. Don't get caught up with your perceived limitations. Think big and work hard to attain those dreams. As you step up the ladder of progress, you will just about find out that the impossible has just become a little bit more possible. Well my friend another day has ended. We would like you to know that we are very happy that you had listened to Darnell Glover words of wisdom and we'll be looking for you to listen to our upcoming broadcasts. There is many things we could be doing daily, to make the lives of others as well as our own enjoyable. Do not allow life to push you into a dark place. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in our XT time. Hello? Is... Is there anyone here? Tim was right about this place. Anyone? Okay, keep it together. Get a grip.